Hi, this is Josh Nizzi. Thanks so much for picking up this DVD. I plan to take you through basically my process of concepting robots I've developed over the past number of years. I've been doing a lot of robots. Uh, so we're going to start off doing roughs, which you see going on in the background here. Then we're going to move into 3D Studio Max. We're going to pick one of those roughs, develop it further in 3D Studio Max, have a proxy model we're going to make, then export that into a program called HyperShot, assign some materials, render it out, and then bring it back into Photoshop and paint over it. Add some you know, slight texturing and text and decals and all that kind of stuff. So again, thanks for picking this up and hopefully you'll be able to learn something here. So again, as you can see, we're doing roughs in the background here. Uh, you know, before you get started really doing any design, you need to think about the goals of the design. Is it for a video game? Is it for a film? You know, is it going to be shot from certain angles only? Is it like in a video game where you can see it from any angle? Do you need to think about texture map resolution, polygon count? Um, there's all that stuff to consider. Is it for a toy where you have to worry about what materials are going to be used to to actually produce the thing? So you got to take all that into consideration. And a good design is going to you know satisfy all of the needs of the the final final product, whatever whatever is needed there. So here I'm just doing my uh, typical process for for doing roughs. I just really just use a simple brush, round brush. I'll mix it up sometimes using different brushes, but I just like to start off with a black brush typically, and just kind of block out silhouettes. Then maybe go over it with some you know grays, and just kind of see what what's coming out of it. So for this guy, my goals really are to come up with a design where I can take take you guys through the entire process that that I've developed. So I'm going to do more modeling than I normally would probably. I'll do probably just, you know, go into more detail than I normally would just to normal in order to to kind of show everything. So I want to come up with a design where I can do all that. It has a lot of, you know, mechanicals, uh, mechanical pieces, you know, armor, you know, all that kind of stuff. But also I just want to do something fun, cool design, something that I think is cool. I don't often spend too much time just doing a project for me, so that's what I'm going to this time. So with these roughs, you know, you're just trying to explore shapes, uh, explore silhouettes. You know, this robot I'm thinking is going to be kind of a humanoid shape, bi bipedal robot. It's going to be something that you know people hopefully can associate with, something that's kind of recognizable, but hopefully also unique. And that's something you want to think about when you're doing any kind of design, is you know how how much do you want people to be able to associate with it or how much do you want it to seem alien or, or out there and depending on your goals you know um, you want to push things more one direction or another so here again I'm just exploring shapes thinking about you know is this guy what kind of weapons this guy's gonna have staff a shield you're going to have some kind of giant pinchers. I'm, I'm leaning towards having a character that strictly has kind of melee weapons. I'm thinking maybe this guy is, you know, maybe there's like a kind of futuristic robot battling league, and maybe these robots are sponsored by companies or something like that. Not so much like a, you know, war mech with guns and missiles and things like that, but something a little bit, a little bit more fun. So you can see this video is sped up a little bit here. I don't usually work quite this fast. Maybe maybe about that fast. Depends how much coffee I've had. So this guy that I'm working on right now, you can see I kind of have a couple of uh, stylistic themes already going in here. So you've got these kind of teeth going on the the large you know, crusher claw things and bringing that into the chest. Now I'm thinking about bringing that into the shoulders. This guy's also a good example of um, how you, it's a good idea to, to kind of have these larger armor forms that, you know, popped out from the background. So you got, you know, you work on the, the, the silhouette first and then kind of do these lighter um, armor on top of it, which is almost like you have to worry about the silhouettes of that armor as well against the backdrop. When usually the, that, that black is, for me, is kind of more intricate, you know, doodads and you know, 
sprockets and gyros and you know, whatever kind of stuff is back in there, the stuff that actually makes a robot move. And then you want to have the plates on top of it that then can shift and move over. And you know they want to be functional armor, but then you also need to really think about range of motion. You need to think about you know what kind of moves or motion this guy's going to have, what's required. You know, is it supposed to have the feeling of you know like a tank where it doesn't have much organic movement? Or is it supposed to be like some cyber ninja type thing and you really want to have lots of moving parts? So you got to consider all that stuff. But also, you know, at this stage, you really just kind of want to have fun. You want to play with the shapes. You want to just explore things. So with this guy, I've kind of had this idea for maybe these large, I don't know, knives or chainsaws on, on the end of sticks kind of coming off his shoulders. So he'd still have hands but you know maybe he could grab somebody and pull it in pull him in and then start punching him or something like that i don't know how practical it would be cuz i imagine they'd be pretty fragile those kind of long knives on the end of sticks like that would probably get snapped off but it's a somewhat unique unique profile but here i'm just going to try a little something different with this guy just iterating on the idea this time going a little bit more traditional maybe he's got some kind of sword chainsaw sword type thing I'm, not, I'm thinking probably not projectile weapons but I don't know, we'll see so here's an idea, just kind of exploring this kind of laser hologram shield. So it's not like a physical shield, but with you know, with a shield like this, you could still see through it and see the see the robot, see the detail and stuff. But then it would also be able to block projectiles. So something like that might be kind of cool. Thinking about giving him kind of maybe elephant type feet with claws or something. So here I'm just kind of organizing my roughs. I like to keep them about the same size just so I can kind of keep the ideas uh, organized. So we're skipping ahead a little bit here just to another idea. I can't think of maybe this guy's got some kind of sword. This one I'm going to start thinking a little bit about the pose. What kind of stance I might want in my final design. So I'll do a lot of using a lasso and just moving things around. You know, a lot of freeform, you know, transform or warp, flip the canvas. Just you know, you want to, you want to do things where you can get kind of fresh eyes on designs. You just want to be able to work quickly, just get ideas down, just kind of explore and have fun. So with this guy, I'm thinking he's kind of maybe a, a bit more of like a brute, just big, thick guy. You know, he'd be real firmly planted, kind of wide stance, have a, you know, a real physical shield, kind of a thick, thick piece of metal or something. So I'll do a lot of just drawing, you know, with grays and blacks and then going back in and erasing. It's a really good idea when you're designing these kinds of things to think about negative space also. Something I learned for sure from working on Transformers is that, you know, having negative space is a really good thing in robot designs. Because, you know, when they animate, you get this some cool, you get some cool parallax with, you know, pieces moving in front of each other. But also I think the negative space really helps... Uh, to integrate the robots into the world, you know, having those places where you can see through a little part, you know, see part of the background, or whatever. I think it's uh, it makes for a much more interesting design. So I'm thinking with this guy, maybe mixing it up, kind of giving him some, maybe giving him a whip instead. A robot with a whip is kind of cool.
It's just starting to go in and add another level of detail on this guy. Thinking about where he might have larger plates of armor, where there might be more intricate detail shapes. A little bit generic right now, but I think there's some possibility with this guy. You can see the design next to him, how it's definitely just had a disadvantage how I drew him kind of from that straight on, almost like he's ready to be rigged for animation. Just when you're exploring, you know, shapes and designs, trying to do roughs, I think you're, it's much better to do it in some kind of pose. It just gives them a lot more character, especially when you're trying to sell a rough. If there's an idea that you want to push to a director or production designer or art director or whatever, I definitely suggest that you put more detail into it and put it in a cooler pose, and, you know, in a more prominent position on the whatever sheet you deliver to them to be able to pick. So again, just kind of erasing parts away here, moving things around, scaling them. Kind of look like maybe one leg's a little bit forward, one's back. I'm liking some of those the negative shapes up near the neck. Looks cool. It also helps those negative shapes also help to push that it's actually a, a robot, not some kind of alien. Because you can have pistons and things up there. So I'm thinking maybe it's a double whip on this guy. Starting to think about maybe what kind of face he has, eyes. So that guy's looking pretty good. I'm going to get rid of this guy over here. Because nobody's ever going to pick that guy. So here, moving back to another, another one that started earlier, just kind of developing a little bit more. There might be something to this guy. I don't know, we'll just see. And thinking about you know where those different larger armor plates are, I need to kind of come up with some kind of stylistic theme for this guy, some something repetitive forms to use to give him a little bit of personality. Those large kind of spiky things though, those are pretty unique off his shoulders. I imagine those would could kind of be curled up on like a backpack or something and then could kind of fling out forward. I don't know. Yeah. I think I want to extend these up some, give them a little bit of space. A little longer. Don't want them to be too close to the body because you want them to be able to move his arms and stuff. I generally like to put some negative space there around the the inner thigh. Like put a piston in there or something like that. Kind of you know, echoing what happens in human anatomy. I think that's something that's also worth talking about is I think it's really important to be knowledgeable about human anatomy or, you know, anatomy of animals and things like that. Even for when you're designing robots. Because that's something that people associate with. It's something that makes sense. It's logical. And if you can echo that in your designs, I think it's going to be beneficial. Or at least have the knowledge of it and know whether you want to copy it or stray from it. And you can help to make you know certain robots look more evil or more good by how well you stick to kind of human anatomy. So usually you know things that look more human are going to be considered more friendly. Decided to change those spike things on the off the shoulders into chainsaws. I think they are looking pretty spindly right now. But still kind of interesting.
So whenever I do this this kind of painting, you know, I, actually whenever I do any painting in Photoshop, I always have my left hand on the keyboard, and then I use a, a tablet. So you have a lot of quick keys set up in Photoshop. It's real nice because you can set up those custom quick keys and um, you can set up actions, set up brushes, set up tool presets. I highly recommend going through and setting that up because you know the more time you can spend doing creative stuff rather than kind of being bogged down in, in programs and in the computer, um, the better. Especially, I would say, you know, invest some time in making some cool brushes. I'll touch on brushes a little bit after we render out our model in HyperShot and bring it in to Photoshop uh, for the final paint over, but I know there's some other videos know my videos that uh, explain that a lot a lot better in, in detail so I would say check those out for sure because that will save you a lot of time that guy was looking pretty cool so I took some of the parts that I you know I liked from that guy kinda his, his main body I like the feet some cool stuff happening there some nice shapes so I'm just gonna develop those a little bit more make this guy a little bit more lanky Thinking he's going to have a pretty typical kind of, you know, muscular type build. You know, real broad shoulders. He's going to be pretty thick. I'm personally drawn to those kind of designs and robots. It's the the real thick, kind of massive, strong looking ones. So since nobody's telling me what to do, that's what I'm going to do. So you can see with just some simple brush strokes, you can kind of indicate, you know, pistons and mechanical parts and things like that. Seem like they might perhaps have some kind of functionality. I was thinking maybe with this guy, you could actually see the pilot. So the pilot maybe is kind of sitting right up there between the head and the, the chest, like in the neck area. Maybe this yellow stuff is his kind of control panel, kind of glowing, maybe under lighting his face or something. So he wouldn't be like super prominent, but he'd just be kind of neat to see a pilot, you know, up inside there. Yeah, here I'm going to lower the opacity and just maybe put a little canopy over him so he's somewhat protected. Gonna think about what kind of weapons this guy might have. Maybe he's got some uh, kind of blade, knife type thing that pivots from his wrist, and kind of slides out, or rotates out rather, so he can either you know grip things with his hands or flip it out as a knife. So here's another rough that I kind of started messing with, and uh, I'm liking some parts of it. I like the the head. There's some cool stuff going on there with those horns. Some shapes that are kind of, kind of nice. The circular shape of the head, and then kind of being echoed in that outer shape. I like the feet quite a bit here. Kind of a mix of like hooves and high heels, but manly high heels, tough high heels. High heels like Sylvester Stallone wears. Trying to play with maybe some what the shoulder pads might look like. Trying to work, keep in line with that kind of circular, sharp um, design or that style cue that I have going on up there. So, but it didn't quite work out. I'm liking these feet though. So here with this arm, it's got these kind of protruding bits, maybe some kind of shield generator, pulse generator, generator or something. So now I'm just going and adding kind of another level of 
of highlights to this, another level of refinement. Always got to keep in mind when you're placing your kind of outer armor pieces about how the thing's going to rotate and animate, what kind of poses you want it to have. Especially up in the chest, it's easy to design something that won't really allow for a lot of range of motion of the shoulders or the clavicles. And then you kind of miss out on a lot of uh, expression, a lot of dynamic poses if you don't have clavicles on your robot. Here I'm just kind of going in and adding some little pinholes where light would come through. Some nice things about this guy. So just continue to work this guy, just kind of develop it further. Just kind of playing around with things, different shapes. It's kind of a cool chest piece in there. I think it's really always good when you can have repeating forms. A little bit of a samurai flare here. Just a little bit. A little tube coming off his forearm, maybe leading into his back. It's always nice when you are designing things like this, you know, to think about having different kinds of materials, different kinds of uh, movement. So, you know, maybe that tube is like some kind of flexible hose, and so, you know, it would kind of bounce a little bit or something. Just add a nice contrast to the more rigid pieces. Again, just playing with some type of energy type shield here. That guy has some some promise. I'm going to go ahead and iterate on him a little bit. Develop this arm a little bit different. So this is kind of, he's got some chainsaw type thing over here. Keep that tube back there. That's kind of nice. Just adding some more kind of negative space in here. Where light might come through. Here I'm going in just using a brush um, I created to do tubes. So maybe this guy's got some giant whip type thing. I like the whip idea. I think I think I'm going to do something with a whip. I was trying to make this chainsaw maybe a little different here. Maybe it's kind of a mix between a sword and a chainsaw. So it kind of comes to a point. It's kind of cool. So I'm just going to go in, again, just thinking more about what this guy's going to look like, detailing him out further and further, you know, how his eyes might look. Are they more, is it human-ish with just two eyes, or is it, maybe he has one eye in the middle, kind of back behind some armor. I'm putting pin lights different places on him, just kind of glowy bits and stuff. Some nice things happen with that guy. So at this point, I'm kind of starting to lean towards a couple of a couple of the, the designs. So I think I'll probably pick those, pick the two I'm, I'm leaning towards most, and bring them down here and just work on those guys, develop them, take them to another level, polish. I decided to make this guy a little more... Uh, 
um, athletic looking, a little more kind of lanky, not quite so squat. Just give him some longer legs. I think I'm also trying to do something unique with the profile. Give him some big spikes on the shoulders or something. So here again, we're kind of jumping ahead. I did some more detailing on these guys. I'm just going to go in to this guy and just keep keep detailing him here. See, I brought in the hexagonal uh, energy shield. Just detail now his hands, what the mechanicals might look like in here. Not thinking too much about specifically what they are, but just indicating them a little bit. You don't have to get too specific. I'm liking this hammerhead shark head piece. I also like about this guy, he's just big and beefy. He's got some cool legs. There's a lot of nice opportunities on this for for modeling out some machinery or, or using different machinery pieces I already have or have made before. So here you can see all the different brushes I have. So one thing that's important with any of your any of your roughs you do or any concept is just to give them you know uh, a way to tell how big they are, sense of scale. So I've got these little dudes, scientist dude and army dude and etc. So it's just a brush, and I can you know put the size I want next to these guys. So I was thinking these guys would be these robots can be pretty huge. So. People will get an idea for how big they are now just by putting a little person next to it. So I'm kind of going through and organizing them, organizing all my designs here. I'm going to put together basically what I would deliver to a client for you know a sheet of what what roughs would be um, to discuss and then to to move forward on some or to develop some further. So I'm putting the two I developed the most, the two I think are the best at the top, and then the other ones I did down at the bottom. And I'm just going to like label them. It's a good idea to label them just so that, you know, when you're talking over email or the phone or whatever, you can say option one and you both know what you're talking about. Option two, you know what you're talking about. Only thing also to mention is you got to be careful with whatever roughs you deliver because oftentimes, you know, the person you're delivering things to, your client will pick something you really didn't want them to pick. <laughs> so, you know, don't include something that you really hate. Like there's a couple on the bottom there that I would not actually send, like that stupid one in the middle, whatever is, whatever he's about. So I'll generally just collapse all this and save it out as a JPEG, and a lot of times I like to do a smaller version, kind of a more email-friendly version. Maybe I'll put a sharpen filter on there just to make it pop a little bit. But this is what I would basically deliver to a client for first round of roughs. And from here, we discuss it and decide what we want to do next. And for this DVD, I have decided to go with option one. I just like that thick guy, the whips, um, cool hammerhead, and the legs. I think I think he's going to turn out really nice. Um, so that's one we're going to move forward with. We're going to bring it into 3D Studio Max and start to develop him even more and you know create that proxy model and then we'll render it out and come back in here to Photoshop